uh, ever heard about Alexander disease, it's a rare but critical brain disorder that we should know about. In simplest terms, Alexander disease is a disorder that affects the brain's white matter. 1. Is a strange brain disorder affecting your child's development? 2. Confused seizures, swallowing problems and missed milestones in infants. 3. Brain fog, personality changes and unexplained decline in adults. This is the part of the brain that sends signals to the rest of our bodies. So when it's not working properly, it can cause a lot of issues. The cause of this disorder is a change in a specific gene known as the GFAP gene. This gene is important for the normal functioning of our brain cells. Now Alexander disease can present at different ages, each with its own set of symptoms. There are four forms of this disease, neonatal, infantile, juvenile and adult. Each form has its own unique characteristics and symptoms, making this a complex and diverse disorder. So, in a nutshell, Alexander disease is a serious brain disorder that can affect people at any age. It's a condition that changes the way our brain communicates with our bodies, and it's caused by a change in a very specific gene. It's a condition that deserves our attention. Now, how do doctors diagnose Alexander disease? Well, it starts with an observation of symptoms that may suggest Alexander disease. This could be anything from difficulty in swallowing to seizures, depending on the age of the patient. If the disease is suspected, doctors then move on to neuroimaging. This involves taking detailed pictures of the brain to look for signs of the disease, such as abnormalities in the white matter. But the definitive diagnosis doesn't stop there. The next step is genetic testing. You see, Alexander disease is caused by a specific mutation in a gene called GFUP. So doctors look for this mutation using molecular genetic testing. This could be done through gene-targeted testing or genomic testing approaches. This testing is crucial not only for confirming the diagnosis but also for understanding the nature of the disease in a particular patient. Remember, Alexander disease can present in different forms – neonatal, infantile, juvenile and adult and each has distinct clinical manifestations. Therefore, through a combination of clinical observations, imaging and genetic testing, doctors can diagnose Alexander disease. What are the signs and symptoms of Alexander disease? Well, these can vary considerably depending on the age of onset. For instance, in infants, it might include problems with coordination, speech and growth. They might not reach developmental milestones at the expected pace. In older children and adults, there could be issues with speech, swallowing and coordination. There might be changes in personality or mood or an unexplained decline in school or work performance. These symptoms can be challenging, but recognizing them early can lead to a quicker diagnosis. But how common is Alexander disease really? Now let's delve into the epidemiology and incidence rate of this condition. It's important to note that Alexander disease is considered a rare disorder. It affects a rather small number of individuals globally. While it can strike at any age, it's not something that's commonly encountered in everyday life. However, that doesn't make it any less significant. Understanding and recognizing this disease can contribute to better patient care and management. Even though Alexander disease is rare, it's crucial to be aware of it. Does Alexander disease affect boys and girls equally? Now, that's an interesting question. When it comes to 
Alexander disease, it doesn't play favorites. The male to female ratio is one to one, meaning it affects boys and girls in equal measure. It doesn't discriminate based on gender. This condition is an equal opportunity offender, attacking the brain regardless of whether you're a boy or a girl. So whether boy or girl, anyone can be affected by Alexander disease. What is the survival rate for those with Alexander disease? The reality is, it can vary greatly. Factors such as the age at which the disease presents itself and the severity of symptoms play a significant role. While there isn't a cure for Alexander disease, treatment is largely about managing symptoms and improving the quality of life for the individual. This includes physical therapy, medication, and regular monitoring of the disease's progression. Although living with Alexander disease is challenging, medical advancements are continually improving the quality of life for those affected. Like, share, comment, subscribe.